If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Hey, how's it going? Hi. Good, you? Good. So I I just want to check in. So did you have any specific question or did you want just the general overall read of where you are and what's next in your spiritual evolution and that sort of thing? Yeah, just a general. Okay. That's fine. Okay. All right. So are you familiar with the chakra system? Okay. So then I don't have to define it for you as I go. So perfect. And uh, standard disclaimers, I'm going to be channeling, which means that I'll remember roughly 15 to 20% of what I tell you in an hour. And so, uh, you know, stop me, ask me questions in the moment. If you have anything, if I say something that is confusing, just stop me and ask. Don't, don't try and be polite because I, I just go full throttle for the, you know, the entire time it takes for me to get through it. If you wait for me to take a breath, you're not going to get it. So just like, be like, Hey, wait, okay. You know, and then, uh, what's going to happen is we're going to look at, so we're going to look at where you are on the current level. So keep in mind that the blocks I'm seeing are blocks that are on this level. They are not a report card on your entire life. Okay. So don't take it as a, Oh my God, I have so many blocks. Please don't do that. What happens is that when you've just cleared a level, there will be a whole lot of blocks because you're on a brand new level with a whole bunch of things to get through before you get to that level. If you're just at the end of a level and you're about to clear it, you'll have very few blocks. It is not a report card on your life. It is just where you are in the process on this particular level. Okay. And with that said, I'm looking for the things that are in the way. I'm not looking for the things that you've done. So please don't take it as, ah, there's so much. Okay. You'll be fine. At the end, what we're going to do is we're going to identify if there are blocks that are, that are symptoms of other blocks. I will tell you, don't bother working on this. It's a symptom of that. When you clear that, this will go away. Just ignore it. It's not a big deal, whatever. Right. So that you're not wasting time on things that you can't fix unless you do something else, right? And then we'll also look at the themes, right? So themes that are, that are solid. Most people have between one and three themes. Okay. And so we'll go looking for that. And then if, if I have a quick fix, I will give it to you in the moment. Okay. If it's not a quick fix, I'll tell you that. And we'll talk about it at the end. Okay. Any questions about the process before we get started? Okay. So if you have any shields up, this would be the time to, you know, put a little hole of allowance to allow me into your shields. I have been told I tickle. So just be aware. (laughs) I don't know. I don't get to experience it. So, (laughs) Um, and so do I have permission to enter your energy field for the purposes of this reading? Okay. Give me one second. I'll be right there. Okay, so this is interesting. As I was coming up to your aura, my guides are like, nothing to report. And then there's like this giant stomping around the outside of your aura, just like stomp, stomp, like he's on guard patrol or something. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, okay. So guard patrol. So he, he doesn't seem to care that I'm coming through, but I just, I was like, oh, okay, giant on guard patrol. All right, so coming in. So the impression that I get as I'm coming into your aura is the sense of coming into water, but it's like I turned into a Chinese dragon as I came in and I'm going up and down in the water in in that sort of unique fashion that Chinese dragons have when they're in a, in a uh, anime or, you know, in a, in a parade or something, you know what I'm talking about? It's just like this up and down undulating thing. Does that have significance to you? Because that's the first time I've ever seen a Chinese dragon. Is that relevant to you? 
I've been thinking about dragons a lot lately. The water makes a lot of sense. I was trying to calm down earlier because I was just getting like nervous about it. And, and so I was in my little water bubble. I just fill up with golden water and just like, <laughs> okay, I'm yeah. like too, too nervous, but th that makes sense. <laughs> that that makes sense to me too, because golden water would trigger Chinese dragon for me. So yeah. Okay. So we're, we're on a page here. Uh, let me see what's going on. Hold on. Okay. So the, the Chinese dragon in this particular instance is, is a reference to celebration. Um, and it's, it, it's like festival, right? That sort of sense of stepping into a space of not really worrying about the workaday world and being able to just sort of be with what is and all of that. So, so this is a reflection of where you are in your life right now is what your aura usually reflects. Does that make sense to you that that would be the case? Um, <laughs> um, it's been pretty sad around here lately. <laughs> um, I I just turned thirty a couple weeks ago, but like my my solar returns was in March or not not Saturn Saturn return mm -hmm. March exactly that date. My grandpa got life lighted from the hospital here over to to one and over in Missoula. And then that whole week he was like on the edge. And so it seemed like um, the veil was really thin. I kept trying to do energy work with him and, and do something to be helpful. And instead it's like, like I saw the family that was there with him, like the room was full of like, not just people, but like people on the other side. Not, not like aliens, but like, yeah, and, and angels, like, things like that. Yeah, yeah. And so he'd be talking to them, and then talking to me, and then you know, like he could see it. I think like way easier. But I don't know. He was trying to describe some of the things that he saw, and um, um, <laughs> but yeah. So. My grandpa passed away about a week, 10 days after the, you know, and, and it was pretty long and, and hard. And then my grandma's got Alzheimer's. And so I'm now her like primary caregiver and she's like <laughs> cranky and crazy and, and Alzheimer's. So, yes. yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, so this is, this is a wish fulfillment that I'm seeing then is this desire to be like free and not have to worry about stuff and that all of it. Okay. All right. That's good for me to know. So let me, let me check in here. Yeah. That's pretty strong in your field. There's this real desire to be done sort of thing. The the thing about wish fulfillment, fulfill, you know, filling up your aura is that, are you doing active manifestation on this? Because I, I'm trying to, so what I'm trying to determine here is whether this is a conscious choice to stand in this energy or whether it is a fleeing from current circumstances, fantasy fulfillment, standing in this energy. So that's kind of my question right now, which, which way is it for you? Are you consciously manifesting freedom or are you you are okay yeah. so yeah that is that is definitely showing up in your field and it it does not want to peel away so it is solid there normally i can peel things away and look at underneath and see what's going on you know whatever but it's not it's not giving to anything else so it is solid so well done on your manifesting uh, given how solid this is i i feel like this is gonna come to fruition for you so yeah, let me, let me get a sense on that. Hold on. Yeah. Three or four months, three or four months is what they're telling me. So yeah, 
Okay. Anything else I need to know in here? Hold on, let me check. Hmm. So I'm going to note this here and we'll look at it more significantly as we get into the chakras, but there is a, an underpinning of fear here. And so keep in mind that not everything you manifest has to come into form in the way you think it will. Okay. So it doesn't have to be what you think it is to get it. The how is not your job. It's the universe's job. Okay. All right. All right. Let's come up into the crown chakra. Checking your flow. Inflow looking good. Outflow looking good. It's a little slow, but it's all there and processing properly. So that's good. I'm just going to check your root chakra while I'm at it, just because I'm going to check your circuit. Okay, so the, the root chakra flow is good too. I am seeing the vestiges of a steel plate under your feet down there. And what that means is that at some point in your life, you had given the right to pass judgment on your life to someone else. And that if they, if they decided you were found not worthy, that it would just rip your feet out from underneath you and slam you to the ground sort of thing. Um, but I'm seeing it in vestige. So like it's, 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 you've cleared it, but the memory of it is still there. Right. So it feels like it's a somewhat recent clear, or it was cleared. Yeah. Somewhat recently in the last couple of years. Right. So yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's the, the, the echo of it is still there, but it's fading. So no worries there, but good energy flow. Great. So you're not in the energetic fetal position, which is stunning for the fact that you have been in caregiver role for all this time. That is, that, that speaks to good self-care. So well done. Okay. Now let's take a look at what else is in the crown chakra here. Hold on. Feels like you're a recovering control freak. And I say, <laughs> she's laughing. <laughs> I say recovering <laughs> because the mind on overdrive block is here, but the, the thoughts are moving a lot slower than I normally see them move, which is the recovering part, right? It's like, yes, you're still, you've still got a plan and a backup plan for your backup plan, right? You know, but the, the speed at which your brain is going <laughs> has slowed down, right? So, you know, the monkey mind is not running at a million miles a minute. Okay. So that's, that's good. Okay. So as we're looking at this, so the, I feel like a lot of this slowdown has come from this sort of fatalism. It's just this, well, there's nothing I can do about it. So there's no point in worrying about it. Right. And it's a hard way to get the lesson, but it's giving you the lesson. So every challenge comes with a gift, right? So, you know, it's working and the key for you, the invitation for you is going to be to apply this to different areas of your life, right? Because it applies with your grandmother, but not as much in other places, right? So, but it's actually serving you to slow your mind down. And so the encouragement would be to start to recognize that there is a whole lot out there that you actually have no control over and that therefore there is no point in worrying about, right? In fact, all the world, <laughs> the entire freaking world, yeah. we have no control over, right? So if you could just expand that belief structure into your entire reality, it would actually serve you a lot. It would, it would make your life much less stressful, okay? So you're already doing it effectively in that one area. Just eh, blanket, blanket it. Not my monkey, not my circus, right? <laughs> Um, and so the, okay, let me see what else is here. Masculine looks good. 
nice and solid. Connection to your guides looks good. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So you're a natural channel. Are you aware of that? Um, I, I, you saw, you mentioned it on the podcast. So I was going to ask because I was listening to like shamanic drum beats and relaxing and practicing opening the, all the chakras and just, and just, and there was, her her name was Nick Tar, but she was in my body and like looking at my arms. They're like looking, and she's like, "Where's where are my embellishments? I, I don't have them." And um, <laughs> then we're like scanning where I am, and it like looked really weird to her. And then I this was looking at my dog, and I'm telling her, you know, like that's Freya, and she was just started laughing that like that was so weird for me to keep that big, pet. and so, and I have not done that since because yeah. <laughs> that wasn't yeah it was strange and then the the one other time I had like this really loud voice just no in my head and I just don't like that either so I just like I'm not sure how to yeah so I just okay. yeah all right so the you are definitely a natural channel those are definitely channeling experiences slash possession experiences if they weren't per, under permission right the the thing to keep in mind is that if somebody's trying to channel through you, you're going to feel pressure on the top of your head, right? Okay. You know, that's going to be the first thing you feel is you're going to feel pressure and tingling and, you know, sort of this sense of you'll, you'll know when things are knocking at your door, right? And then yeah. you just need to be able to go, nope. Right. And, and if it keeps pushing it, it, then you get a fuck off, right? You're like, go away and just like shove at it. But, you know, if you're a natural channel and you're not able to hold your energy, you definitely need to get some shields up. Um, you know, if you're doing any sort of psychic anything, you really need shields. That's just sort of the nature of the beast, right? So the, that's, that's part one. But before you can do shields, you need to master your own energy field. You've got to be able to pull your energy field in and not have other people inside of it. Have you done the boundaries for MPAS program on the, on the website yet? You did? Yeah. Okay. All right, good. So once you have that, then you can put shields up once that's in good place. Okay. So, all right. So yeah, but there is something definitely trying to channel through you because I went looking for it and I literally, now I designed this system, right? I designed this system of things that I look for because I did 3000 of these energy scans and, and, you know, I went and, and, found common blocks that that everybody had some of and that's what I go looking for now and then I ask what else is there right and I could not find the the you know I don't have the thing up in front of me to, to look at because I don't I, I designed the system I know what it is right and I yeah. just automatically look for these things and I could not find it I, I was like, there's something else I'm supposed to be looking for. What is it? And I kept sliding away from me in a way that is not a memory lapse, right? It's a sliding away from me in a way that something was trying to hide it from me. Okay. okay. So you have something in your energy field that wants to use your channeling that did not want me to teach you how not to let it in. Okay. So okay. just, yeah, just letting you know. All right. Let's see. Hold on. Did you look up the entity that you channeled? So I don't uh, recognize that name. It would be it would be relevant to look up because yeah. I I didn't recognize the name, but I could feel her when you were talking about her. And she might be who we're talking about. So some entities, once you've channeled them once, they they're like your mind, I get to ride around. you whenever, right? And so you may want to do a little research, okay? Find out who that is, okay? All right, um, what else? Uh, no, no blocked or diverted flow, you're good there. Okay, let's come down into the third eye. <sighs> Checking the transmitter first. 
goes out good. Coming back is slow. Coming back is almost non-existent. Okay, let me check your receiver. Receiver's good. Okay, interesting. All right, so transmitter is what happens when you go out looking for information, like send it out to the Akashic, go looking for it in somebody else's brain, you know, whatever it is that you're doing to send out and looking for information. If you're remote viewing, anything like that, right? Um, and then the receiver is what you think about as your intuition. It's picking up on whatever's in the ethers around you, right? So, uh, you know, someone you haven't talked to in 20 years, you think about them and suddenly they call you, right? That sort of thing, right? Now, your transmitter is going out and getting what it wants just fine, but it is not being allowed to come back in. But your receiver is wide open, so it's not a receiving issue. It is a... I don't want to know because if I knew I'd have to admit that I'm a badass and I'm not ready to be a badass. Okay. So it's that. So it's, it's connected to a lack of, you know, it's not, not willing to give yourself your whole power. Right. So it's, it's a refusal to admit that you have it. Right. Now, let me take a look at that because that's a specific block. Let me see <clears throat> what's going on there. Yeah, okay. So it, it's related to a lack of trust in the universe, for one. The, let's see here. I'm trying to name exactly what the lack of trust is because I see very clearly that you have a solid connection to the universe and that you're running the energy easily, but there is a piece here that is undermining the rest. It's like you're good most of the time, but then this piece comes in and goes, right? And so the I'm just trying to put a name to it. Give me a second here. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it is, it literally is a waiting for the other shoe to drop thing. Right. So it's, it's like, nope, I trust the universe. I trust it. I trust it until I don't because something goes to hell in a handbasket. Right. And, and it's what it comes down to is a way, the way that you define things that you experience as negative experiences. Okay. You experience something that's negative, quote unquote negative, and you define it as negative, And therefore you look at the universe and say, you did me dirty. Right. And instead, instead of looking at the painful experience and or uncomfortable and or, you know, not desired. Right. And saying, Hmm, that's an interesting experience. I wonder what the universe has planned for me that this this had to happen for that to come to fruition right because oftentimes it's breakdown before breakthrough right or you're you need to have this experience to put you in a position to be able to have that experience right you need to ha- you know meet these people who did you dirty in order to be able to relate to the person that you need to meet, who's going to be like super good for you. You know, there's lots of ways in which these things pan out. Right. And, and it's one of those things where you're, you're 30 now. So you've had enough life experience to be able to see that many of the negative experiences you've had in your life have actually gifted you with things that, that you would not be the person you are today. Had you not had those experiences. Right. So the key now in this transition phase for you is to start to anticipate the good experiences that are coming out of the the quote unquote negative ones 
so that you can say, oh, hmm, this is happening. I wonder why. I don't know, but let's figure it out. Let me find the gift, right? The faster you can go from, man, this sucks to, okay, what's the gift? Uh, the, the happier you are and the, the more you can step into your trust in the universe and let go of that other shoe dropping thing, right? Okay. It's also about learning to be able to be solid in yourself and trust your ad adaptivity, your adaptability, right? Because when the other shoe drops, you're a master planner. You got a plan and a backup plan and a backup plan for the backup plan. You know, you, you could make this plan in under three seconds. You know, <laughs> you don't need to make a plan. You've got it. It's all there. It's automatic. It's done. Master planner, 10,000 hours complete, done, right? So, you know, if you, if you know that about yourself and you know you're, you're really good at it and you're able to adapt and you're able to, you know, identify all your resources and, and make something out of them in any given moment on a, on a moment's notice. It's like, well, why do you have to worry? You don't have to worry because you got this covered no matter what, right? That's, that's, that's the energy I'm talking about, right? Okay. All right. So we've got that. <sighs> yeah. The, the refusal to admit your own power piece is about, um, it's really about the well of rage. You know, there's, there's a lack of trust in the universe, but there's also a well of rage. It's just like, you know, it sits under the surface. Generally you're sweet and kind and caring and wonderful. And you're everybody else's rock, but every so often God help the person who just triggers you and you just go, kaboom. Right. And you feel bad about it later, but damn, it feels good to let it out in the moment. Right. <laughs> it's just like, ah, right. Yeah. And so the, the, that is what's limiting your power right now, because as an inherently good person, you will not give yourself more power until you address that because you don't want to lay waste to the world. And the more power you have, the more damage you can do, right? When you, when you lose it. So you have to get to the point where you're not losing it in, the, in order to get access to more of your power because you will inherently limit that. Right. And then of course you say, well, I can't be trusted with my power. And then you start to feel like you're a bad person. You're not a bad person. Let me just say that. Okay. Everybody has unpleasant thoughts from time to time. does make you a bad person. Okay. All right. Okay. So if you were a bad person, you wouldn't care about limiting your power with your anger. You would be like, give me more power. I want control. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else in here? Hold on. You have some creative pursuits because I do not see the creativity usurped by the mind in here. So that looks good. You're, you're, you've got some other creative outlets. No choking. Breathe air, swallow water. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's a reminder. Yeah. Okay. So that looks good. And then let's see. Why do I keep doing this with my head what's going on here mm, okay they want me to tell you about the base of your skull so look at me see me on screen see that yep. right? the occiput that's your occiput right back there okay that is where possession comes in okay oh. they can come in through the crown or they can come in through the base of the skull so I don't normally look at this, but they're telling me I have to because they keep having me do this. So hold on. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So you need a screen on that. So just like, just take your hands right now, unless you've got the phone in them, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but take your hands and just like pull a screen up over the base of your skull with your hands just to like screen it from everything that could come in and and that nothing is allowed in through that venue through that portal right yeah oh yeah Damn. all right all right so the thing that was trying to get in that was trying to keep me from seeing this is a ghost, not an entity. And she is pissed. 
yes, that we just did that. So, okay, now that that's done, will you go away? You're not gonna get any joy here, you need to go. Do you own a piece of jewelry or something that you bought from an estate sale? or from a, from a goodwill or something like that. It feels like she's attached to, I'm trying to get her to go, but she's attached to something, to an object. Yeah. No, I have pocket rocks. <laughs> I have jewelry on my fingers that I wear every day. No, it but feels like, So you, you said that you, no, that was a different entity than this. Hold on. It feels like, and maybe it was a gift, so you don't know that it was from an estate sale or something, but it feels like it was an estate sale and she, and, and, or, you know, her stuff got donated to Goodwill after she died or something like that, right? So it was, you know, something. Feels like she's attached to something in your house. And if it, it feels like a piece of jewelry. It does, it feels like a piece of jewelry. So go through your jewelry, if, you know, take a look at it. it. It may not even be something that you wear regularly. Would it be something that's definitely mine? Cause I live in the house with my grandma. And she's got all kinds of crap that she's mm. collected from all kinds of people. So yeah, that makes to yours. more sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It might not be yours. It's, it's in your home. I can feel that it's in your home. Right. So here's your, here's your deal, right? She, you've, you've closed off your entry points to her, but what you can do is just pick up each piece of grandma's jewelry and the one that feels warm or tingly or icky or something is going to mm -hmm. be the thing that you need to get rid of. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So, and I would not give it away because you'll be giving her away, right? You might want to bury it, right? Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. clearing it's a lot more work than you want to deal with. It's not worth it. So, okay. Yeah. Is everything there? Yes. Okay. All right. Can we come down the throat? Yes, we can come into the throat now. Okay. We're going to work in self expression here. Okay, see my mouth? My mouth is open, but nothing's coming out. My head's even jutted forward a little bit. It's like, you want to express yourself, but you're not expressing yourself, right? It's a, I'm gonna do it, but I'm not gonna do it, right? It's this push me, pull you, right? So uh, part of this is conflict avoidance through people pleasing communication. Um, and part of this is why bother it doesn't matter anyway, which is another conflict avoidance thing. So I agree with you that you do not bother with somebody with Alzheimer's, okay? Whatever they believe, just go with it. Life is easier, right? It's just not worth it. But with everybody else, it matters, okay? So, you know, you know, put on your inner child, play with, play with life sort of thing for the Alzheimer's communications, you know, it's like, oh, she's making up a story. I'll make up a story with her. We'll go together. Right. But the, it is important for you to speak your truth in every other place. There's a, especially because there's no place for it there. Right with your grandmother. So, you know, or very little space for it, you know, she'll have good days where you can do it, but less and less as time goes on. Right. So, you know, the, that's the, the piece to consider there right now. There's also a trying to be invisible piece going on here. It's like, which is interesting. It's an interesting dichotomy with the person who runs everybody's life, right? 
you're, you're, you're kind of the person who plans and runs everything, but you want to be invisible. So yeah. Okay. So this would be coming back to you're a badass. So you don't need to be invisible. Okay. I know you don't feel like a badass right now, but trust me, I'm looking at your energy field and you're a whole like freaking amazing badass. Okay. The, So you had a rageaholic parent. This is what it feels like. You had a rageaholic parent. A little bit. The alcoholics, just not. Yeah. But so then... it's still, it's like so that makes sense though that it's safer to just be invisible, be quiet, not be seen, and then, you know, right. Yeah. Then you're safe. Yeah. Except that you know now you can get up and leave, which you couldn't do as a kid. Right. So this is, this is the first thing I'm going to tell your inner child is you have car keys. <laughs> you have car keys and the ability to walk out the door. Right. And so the, yeah, I would say that that's something that you really definitely need to remind yourself of because your issue isn't that you can't stand up for yourself. If somebody comes at your face because you absolutely can, right? Yeah. That's that well of rage. It's like, oh, you want to dance? I got <laughs> dance in me and you look like catharsis, right? You know, you're good there. But there's <laughs> there's this primal child thing of I need to be invisible so I don't get attacked because as much as you're good at protecting yourself, you it, it really takes a lot out of you to do it. It's exhausting, right? And it's terrifying and it's overwhelming and it's overwhelming both in the, in the attack coming at you and in the rage coming out of you, right? It's just like, ugh, it's all of the stuff. So, you know, the, the key here is twofold. One is to express your truth early and often. Okay. The reason things get to blow up level is because you knuckle under knuckle under knuckle under put up with it put up with it put up with it and then you explode right you need to never put up with or knuckle under you need to look at somebody and go I, no that doesn't work for me right because that minor conflict is so much easier to manage than the major blow up and the aftermath of the blow up right you avoid conflict because that is so traumatic for everyone involved that you don't want to do it but the fact that you're avoiding it is what's causing it. Okay. So you need to, you know, speak early, speak often. Right. Okay. Let's see what else, anything else in here. Are you subject to somebody else around your grandmother? Are your decisions subject to someone else's choices too? My aunts and uncles that are right there. Okay. That are constantly in and out. Yeah. But they're not yeah. her caregivers, but they're, they feel like they have a right to say something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cause I'm getting some dependence and asking permission in there. And yeah. that's a child pattern, which given the family dynamics and that they're in the generation above you kind of makes sense. But from the fact that you are the primary caregiver and you're the one on scene all the time, that is not really the best path. No, it doesn't yeah. feel good. Yeah. So this would be where I'm saying that you've got to start speaking your truth, you know, and, and maybe just say, Hey, I'm done. Somebody else's turn. Yeah. Right. And I think, you know, when, when we were talking about that three or four months, I think that's, what's going to happen. I think you're going to finally get the gumption to be like, mm, I'm out, right? Did my time, you're somebody else's term, tag, you're it, right? And that's okay. That's okay, all right? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm even checking in with your grandmother's spirit and she's, she's like, yeah, that's fine. Your grandfather is nodding and smiling and saying, yes, give her her life back, okay? He is saying that to you. He is saying, give her her life back. She deserves a life. Okay. So I know he told you to look after her. 
but he's been hanging around and he's seeing the toll it's taking and you know there there are other pathways that do not require you to give over yourself to this okay he says he knows you love him and you love her and that you've done enough okay okay yeah she's she's almost at the point where she's not even going to notice anyway you know that's yeah yeah that's kind of the point and at that stage you really need full-time you know 24-hour care and that can't be done by a single person it's not possible you you have to sleep sometime so you know okay Okay, that's everything in the throat chakra. Let's come down into the heart. Heart chakra is pretty armored up. So what that means is that there's not a lot of energy coming and going. Okay. So that means no, no love going out, no love coming in. It's just there. You know, you do things out of kindness and support, but the heart chakra isn't open to give the love. Okay. So, you know, you're, you're expressing it with your actions, but it's not coming out energetically. Okay. And when you don't receive love, your inner child starts to believe you don't deserve love. It doesn't know that you shut it down. Okay. We oftentimes will shut it down because love comes with all kinds of other crap attached to it in our childhood. It's like, oh, I'll give you this much love. You deserve, you know, you, you owe me that much love. You know, I'll give you this much love. And now, now you have to do this for me or whatever. Right. It it comes with an obligation of some kind. Right. And so you shut it down because you don't want to receive the obligation. So you don't receive the love and you're like, well, if I didn't receive your love, I don't owe you shit. Right. That's how that goes. So the challenge with that is that the obligation is the bullshit, not the love. And so love is unconditional. Anything that's tacked on top of it is not relevant. So I want to encourage you to allow the love in while rebutting the, the obligation. Okay. Because you need to start letting love in. It's, it's keeping you separate from everyone else. And it's making it hard for you to connect. Because there's, there's no connection point for you, right? So uh, let me take a look here. Hold on. Yeah, there's a whole lot of grief built up in here. You know, some of it is unprocessed grief from your grandfather. Some of it is. It's grief from not receiving love. Right. It's the I I feel unloved grief, that sadness, that loneliness, that that isolation energy that only goes away when you start to let it in, let love in that what happens is the love comes in and it squeaks out some of the grief and it comes out through your eyeballs and tears. So you feel loved and you cry, you feel loved and you cry, you feel loved and you cry. And eventually you will stop crying when you feel loved because you finally squeezed out all the grief. Okay. From not having felt loved. So that is, you know, that's, that's an opening the heart. So you really, you know, that's, that's not a quick fix, but we'll talk about it at the end. Okay. Let me check for the thing here. Hold on. So there's betrayal energy in here. A little bit of it is about your parents, you know, feeling like, you know, you were supposed to have, you know, they were supposed to be X, Y, and Z and they weren't, and you feel betrayed by that, except that you chose those parents. So just don't forget that. And, um, but it, it feels like this is, this has got past life ties to it. 
Um, it's interesting. It feels like you have this experience that your parents, the, the spirits playing your parents in this life, generally take on roles where they will let you down. That there is, it's like a theme throughout your lifetimes that this is the roles that they play. And so it's, it, it's this carry forward from multiple lifetimes and, and they're not always your parents. They're, you know, sometimes they're friends, sometimes, you know, partners, you know, whatever, but, um, their, their job in your lifetimes is to let you down. And so there's clearly a lesson that you're trying to get that you haven't gotten in all of these lives because you keep doing it over and over again. That's the only reason we do this is because we're trying to get something right. So the, so I'm going to give you the, the ways to look about, look at this is that you got to stop blaming them for what you didn't get. So instead you have to say, I didn't get this. I didn't get what I needed, right? Instead of going, you didn't give me what I needed. You, you take it to, I didn't get what I needed, right? Because then it becomes about you and your experience and not about them and what they did or didn't do. And wherever your finger points when you're looking at something is where the power goes. So if you're pointing at them and saying, you didn't give this to me, then they are the only ones who can solve the problem. But if instead you say, I didn't get what I needed, how do I do that for myself now? Right? Now you're in a power position to fix it, right? Because it's about fulfilling your needs, not about who didn't do what for you or to you. Right. Okay. So I'm going to give you that. And, and yeah, that's, that's step one. They're going to, they're saying, let it sit. Okay. So we'll, we'll let that sit. Okay. Anything else on the heart chakra? No. Okay. Let's come down into the third, uh, third chakra solar plexus. Um, I'm just confirming you have 90 minutes, right? Okay, good. Just making sure. Yeah. <laughs> just didn't want to, didn't want to be going over. I'm just looking at the time. So we'll be fine. So third chakra, solar plexus. Let's look at the identity. Um, okay, so <laughs> this is a new image for me. I've got you with your hands on your hips, walking the catwalk to I'm too sexy for my shirt, too sexy for my shirt, so sexy it hurts. You know, the, whatever the, 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 the chorus is on that, but walking on the catwalk, whatever. So <laughs> there's, which is way before your time, but it's, it's where it is. So what this is saying to me is that you've got this, I've got it all together look going on that you use as your identity, right? Your identity is I'm up on the catwalk looking perfect. I'm walking exactly right. Amazing. Look at me. I'm so good. Look at me. Look at me. Right. Which again, is at real odds with trying to be invisible. So I would really encourage you to let go of the invisibility thing because everything else about you is like, Hey, I'm right here. Right. So I'd really encourage you to let go of the invisibility thing. It is not serving you. Everything else about you is absolutely against it. Okay. So, all right. It is a mask. Yeah. Okay. Um, but oddly, it, I feel like it's one you need right now. Most people, I encourage them to drop the mask, be who they are. I feel like you're in a place right now where you need. So identity is very interesting because it is, there's a, an identity that we exude from our personality, from our ego, right? And oftentimes we will buy into that identity and that identity serves a purpose for us. And that's what this one is doing for you you're buying into this identity too. Like you want to believe that this is true and therefore you're investing in it so heavily that you're buying into the identity of it, okay? 
And I, I don't want you to let this go. It is a mask right now, but it can become your truth. Okay. The, the, you know, the being the badass, the, the having everything covered and knowing, you know, how to manage things and are you trusting your adaptability and all the things that we've been talking about. If you do all of those things, this image, this mask will become the truth of you. So um, this is not something I would work on per se. Um, this is, this is something you're, you're like fake it till you make it right now. Okay. Um, so I think, I think this is fine. All right. So let's drop into the inner child, see what she looks like here. Okay. So your inner child is younger than most of the inner children. I see she's like two years old and she's, she's running around with this yellow, flowered dress on and no underwear her butt is like hanging in the wind and she's just like it's like you were it's like you were a naked baby you were one of those kids that never wants to wear clothes is that yeah you're nodding okay still accurate okay I don't want to wear clothes <laughs> <laughs> so yeah but she's she's the cutest thing she's just her little chubby legs and her butt just flopping in the wind and I'm just like okay so but she's laughing and, but she's, she's running away and she's laughing. It's like, we're playing tag, right? She's like, catch me, right? Run away, run away, catch me. Right. But it's, it's like, she wants to be, it's like, you know how parents play that they're the monster. Yeah. Right? She did that. Say that's the game. She's like, she wants me to, you know, grab her and pick her up and, and be like, Arr! you know, and she's like, yeah, right? all of that. <laughs> so yeah, she's, she's, she's really inherently very happy, a little more clothed than she'd like, but very happy. <laughs> so, um, so I'm, I'm not seeing problems there. And this explains why I didn't see the problem with the, the creativity usurped by the mind in your sixth chakra, because she is well up and ready and doing her thing and inner children are all about the creativity thing, right? So you're good there. All right. Okay. So Let's look at the blocks here. Yeah, the too big, too much is showing up. And so that's typically when you're a child, it's the ah, children should be seen and not heard and preferably not seen. It's sort of that energy. It's like, you know, ah, would you stop making so much noise? Would you stop asking me so many questions? Would you stop saying why? They're, they're like, they're hitting me with the why thing. You were a why kid. Like, why, 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 why? And your parents are like, oh my God, enough. Because I said so, go away, right? Yes. So that's in there with the too big, too much thing. And this is part of the reason why you're doing that, that hiding and being out in the world and being very obvious is because the too big, too much is triggering the hiding. It's like, oh, it's not okay to be all of me. So I'll hide, right? It's not okay, right? So I would just, you know, write yourself a permission slip that it's okay to be all of you, sign it from the universe and post it somewhere obvious, right? Because that's really all this one is. That's a super quick fix. Um, and anytime you start to worry about whether or not you're bothering people, just be like, yeah, I'm going to bother him. It's going to be great. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what else is in here. Hold on. No, you got the martyr going hard here. Yeah, it's like you sacrifice yourself on the altar of everyone else's happiness, right? It's like I come at the bottom of my own priority list and everybody else comes first. And if everybody else is happy, then I'm happy. Mostly not really, but I'll pretend I'm happy and it's okay, right? It's better than everybody else being unhappy and blaming me, right? That's the energy. So the encouragement here is to give from your overflow, not from your emptiness. Okay. I'll say that again. Give from your overflow, not from your emptiness. And now you're giving from your emptiness. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and the not good enough is in here too. That's, that's endemic. I think in 3000 energy scans, I think I've found like four people who didn't have this. So, you know, part of that's cultural because 
you know, in, in the U.S., you're meant to be a productive, you know, productive member of society. And if you're not producing, then you don't, you're not worth anything and all of this. Stuff. So part of it's cultural, but part of it's, you know, our, our gender. Women are trained to be the grease of the wheels, not the people who get the benefit of the grease of the wheels, you know. So I mean, there's never enough grease for the wheels. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that one, that was, that was more complex. So that's not a quick fix either. Anything else in here? I expected to find a not welcome, not wanted, not important. But it seems to be more aligned with the martyr piece. I think it's been sublimated into the martyr piece. So it feels like, feels like it's there, but it's underneath the martyr stuff, you know? Um, it's like, it's the way you found to compensate for it. So it's not active because it's triggered the martyr stuff. And now the martyr stuff is what's active, but it's sitting on the foundation of the not welcome, not wanted, not important stuff. Um, so address the martyr stuff. This will show up. The other stuff will show up in the next level, but you got to address the martyr stuff first. So, okay. Anything else in this level? No, okay. Second chakra. Ah, very pretty creative flower going. It's that inner child, all excited. Okay, so We've got a little bit of, so this is usually where passion lives and you've got the inner child portion of passion, which is this very, you know, young, naive sort of, yay, I'm excited about this really more excitement than passion, right? Cause kids don't really have passion. They don't have enough focus to maintain passion, right? So it's really more excitement. Passion on the other hand, it, it's, it's. This feels like it's like, I'm not allowed. I don't deserve, right? There's, it's like, it, it's the martyr piece that is really coming into this, right? It's like, if I get passionate about something, it'll take me someplace else where I'm not supposed to be. I'm supposed to be doing this. This is my, this is what my, do, my martyr self is doing, right? And so there's no permission for passion right now. It's not that it's blocked, it's that you have not given yourself permission because you feel like it would be counterproductive to the life you've chosen. So I want you to hear that again. You feel like passion would be counterproductive to the life you have chosen. Is that the choice you wanna make? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think so. So this is, this is one of those things to think about. Okay. Um, all right. Let me see what else is going on in here. Sexual center feels very depressed, feels very low energy. Like there's like you, you're not giving yourself any space in that arena. Um, or if you do, it's very small, right? It's just like, yeah, the, not seeing fertility in here either that feels like a choice too as a relationship to the, the low sexual energy coming into let me look at the other pieces in here not seeing shame not seeing addiction got some attachment energy in here, but it feels. So usually when I see attachment energy, it's attached to a person or a thing that is very concrete. It's like, you know, who the person is, you know, what the thing is, you know, what you want. It's like, I got to have that thing. It's the only thing that will make me feel loved, make me feel important, whatever it is that you need. Right. It's like that thing or that person is it. I have attachment energy here, but it feels attached like attachment to fantasy. It's like 
you know, there's this insubstantial thing that is holding the energy of this fantasy life that you want, but it's, it's like, it really does feel ephemeral. It feels like a fantasy. It doesn't feel like a, like a manifestation. Like we talked about in the, in the aura, the man, you were manifesting in the aura. The aura was like manifesting, you know, you're standing in that energy. You're going to be in that energy. That's what you're going to call into your life. Blah, blah, blah. This feels like an attachment to a dream, to a fantasy, to something that will never have ground put underneath it. Right. You know, the, what was the Henry David Thoreau had a saying, he's like, build your castles in the air and come back and build foundations underneath them. Right. This does not feel like there will ever be a foundation underneath it. This feels like an, a, a wish fulfillment sort of thing, which comes back to that aura thing that we were talking about before, but it is a, wouldn't it be nice? You know, you know, anytime you say, wouldn't it be nice if whatever comes after the, if is never freaking going to happen right? We just know that because it's, wouldn't it be nice if, wouldn't it be nice as the equivalent of saying, this is never going to happen, but it's nice to think about, right? That's the energy here. And so it, it is in contrast and conflict with the energy in your aura that you're holding. Okay. So I would really encourage you to let go of the fantasy and live into the beingness of it because the fantasy piece is what is keeping it from manifesting. Okay. Because there's an attachment to it being a dream, because if it's a dream, it will always be perfect. And if it becomes real, then it will be real. And then shit can happen. Right. So you need to Burns down <laughs> yeah. or maybe not, you know, maybe not, maybe it doesn't, or maybe it only half burns down and you get to keep the other half and then you get to try for more. Right. I mean, I, I literally ripped my, my life to the ground probably four or five times now. And each time it gets better, right? Each time I start from a better place. So you can't be resistant to the burning down because, you know, that what, what that comes to is you, you're sitting there in Stuckville, okay? Stuckville is a place where you can't see out the other side nobody comes in. When people leave, they never come back. There's no communication in or out. You're in a valley. You can't see anything. And you're sitting there waiting to know which mountain to climb to get out of Stuckville. The answer is any mountain will do. Okay. Because if you don't know, then the only way to find out is to go up a freaking mountain, right? Pick a path. And then if you get to the top and you go, oh, I should have been over there. Okay. Well, see if there's a path around the edge that you can go in that you don't have to go all the way back down into Stuckville because nobody comes back. Remember, there must be a path around, right? And you'll find the path, but you will know that the first mountain will tell you which direction you wanted to go, right? But you can't know it until you climb the mountain. Okay. So it's not about finding the perfect destination. It's about finding the next step. Okay. So that's part of it is you're, you're, you're afraid to make a mistake. Okay. Life is nothing more, but a series of fumbling mistakes that drive you forward that you pick yourself up from over and over again. Okay. And I don't mean that to sound sad and pathetic, but, but I can't even tell you how many mistakes I've made in my life. There's, I, 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 there's no way I could count. Okay. So many, so many mistakes. Right. But I've also made a lot of great decisions. I focus on the great decisions and I, I take the mistakes as the learning opportunities that they are. Right. So <clears throat> everything you do teaches you something for the next thing. So stop worrying about it. Okay. All right. And just because you go after a dream doesn't mean you'll never have another dream right now. You're attached to this one dream. And if you get it, there's like this sense of, well, what now, right? What, you know, maybe it, maybe it sucks. Maybe it burns down, right? Maybe it isn't what I expected or maybe it is. And maybe now I can dream of something else. Maybe I get there and it wasn't what I expected and I can dream of something else, right? <laughs> you know? 
but until you let go of the first dream and turn it into a reality, there's no opportunity for more. Right? So there's that. Okay. All right. Anything else in the second chakra? Deservingness. Okay. All right. So there's a deservingness thing here for you. All right. I, I don't know how many of your of my podcasts you've listened to, but I will tell you the secret about deservingness. You want to know what it is? It was invented by people trying to manipulate you. It doesn't actually exist in the world. Because you are everything and everything is you. So the idea that you might have to deserve it, to have it, is ridiculous. It's already you. You are already it. It is already yours. There is no deserving. It is bullshit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, mm, anything else? No. Okay. Coming down to the root chakra. We're into the home stretch. All right. Root chakra. Already checked the flow. So let's look at, mm, we're going to start with manifestation. That's interesting. Not usually where I go, but we're going to do it. Manifestation first. Check the bubble, 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 bubble. Damn, girl, your manifestation good. It's good. It's clear. So it wasn't clear before we talked about the deserving is what they're telling me. They're telling me that that was a big break, but now it's good. So the only thing you're going to have to be careful of is you're going to manifest and something's going to come in that's so big, that's so good. And you're going to go, oh shit, I did that. I'm powerful. What the hell? I can't manifest anything ever again, right? Because I'm it proved. So the, the limiting on your own power is going to be your limiting factor on the manifestation because of the belief structure there. So, but nothing's in the way now. So rock and roll, hoochie coo, choose wisely. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And let it come in before you change it. Because you're a oh and oh and oh and girl. Yeah. Right? You're like, send it out. Oh, wait, and oh, you're, you're, send it back. Yank, 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 yank. Oh, and. <laughs> the universe eventually just goes, you let me know when you're done because I'm going to be over here. I'm on break until you figure your shit out. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so make your list, commit to it when you let it go, and let it manifest before you make any changes. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's see what else is here. Hold on. Ooh, good circle of friends. Really solid circle of friends. I got you like arm in arm with the circle of now it's what's interesting is that I see this circle of women. Well, feminine energy. It's not all women, but it's feminine energy. And it's like, you guys are all arm in arm with your backs towards each other facing out into the world like you know we're <laughs> defending you know that you shall not pass right it's that sort of energy right does that make sense uh -huh. to you uh -huh. yeah okay so yeah it's 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 that badass women the it's 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 warrior energy though okay it's warrior energy so you have to be careful i mean these are really good friends right but they give warrior love and what that means is you don't get to be soft and, and cuddly with them because if you show weakness, they're going to be like, hey, 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 you're weak here. You're weak here. You got to shore that up. You got to shore that up. You're going to get hurt if you don't. I'm going to poke it so that nobody stabs it, right? You know, it's that, it's that kind of love, okay? It's a problematic kind of love, okay? Because it can be very painful. So the encouragement would be to either bring people with you on the path with you to, to learn how to do things in a more softer and more authentic way, or to pick up other people along the way who, can, who you can be vulnerable and open with. Because the, the open vulnerability space is not really great with warrior women because they'll just like bang on you until you get better in their way, quote unquote, better, right? I'm going to bang on yeah. you until you tough it up, right? Because that's how you stay safe, right? So, you know, they're trying to keep you safe. They're, I was a warrior in many lifetimes. I will tell you, fix that armor, right? But not so great for emotional work, right? 
So just keep that in mind as you're doing your stuff. Okay, what else is here? Yeah, fears around safety and security have been there. We were talking about that at being in the underpinning in the in the or the the thing that I'm seeing here is, you know, the the fear is around the unknown for you. It's around the what do I do if something happens and I don't know how to deal with it. But your whole life, things have happened that you didn't know what to do with and you figured it out the whole time, right? At some point, you just got to be like, yeah, I got this, right? So the encouragement is, yeah, I got this. You got this, okay? And if you don't, you just ask for freaking help. I know you suck at it, okay? I know. <laughs> but you got a, an entire cadre of warrior women who are also good at this shit, Right? If you need something, you just look at them and go, eh, and they'll go kaboom on whatever it is. They got you. They got your back. They're, they're, they're not so great at being soft, but they're really good at being hard, right? <laughs> they're yeah. really good at that. <laughs> Do not mess with their friends because they are going to, you know, they, they got it. So, you know, this is the, the piece where, you know, it's a, it's about letting go of needing to control it and leaning into your, your, your competency because you are in nothing, if not incredibly competent, right? So what's the problem? <laughs> not a problem, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So anything else? No. Okay. So this is, this is everything they have for you. Do you have any questions before I wrap up and do the, the, the stitch together of everything? What do you do with the well of rage? You, you like, yeah. So the well of rage is a process. Um, so the short answer is you're going to find a venue to let it out. And the reason that I paused is because Sometimes when you get into it, there's a lot of other stuff that shows up. And so, and it's, it's unpredictable as to how it's going to be for each person because each person's experience is different. And so the reason I hesitated is because I kind of want you to have somebody you're working with that, you know, either a coach or a therapist or something like that before you do that. Okay. Because other stuff comes to the surface and you need to be able to process it. Okay. Um, so here's, here's, here's the piece. All right. You are standing in your Saturn return energy, which goes for like a year, year and a half, sometimes two years on either side. Right. And you are holding the energy of a new way of being, which I truly believe is turning over the care of your grandmother to somebody else. Okay. And you are holding that in a fantasy fashion right now and, and not like living it, right? The, it's almost like, are, are you a Marvel fan or a DC fan? You, you do like the superhero yeah. things? Yeah. Yep. Cause I'm, I'm like, got this whole superhero identity thing, right? It's like, oh, you know, like Wonder Woman or whatever, right? Just this sort of mm, a badass, right? Or Freya, if you want to go there for, you know, since you named your animal. Um, anyway, the there's this this thing, but it it because it is superhero, it feels fantasy, right? I I would like you to lean more into either Valkyrie or amazon warrior or you know something that's more tangibly true in our reality right not to say that those archetypes aren't true in our reality because those are hardcore archetypes that have been around forever but if, if you've got so much fantasy right it's the fantasy thing i want you to make it a reality i want you to come and ground it right so it's, it's very much for you about grounding into your badass self, right? We did an episode on the Valkyries, so that might be an interesting one for you to look at, but 
or the Spartan women. You know, if you're going to really go in your warrior self, the Spartan, that's how I ended up with my last name. Sparta was the place where women were the most self-determinant in the world at the time. They ran the, the, the government. They were warriors themselves. You know, they, they were badasses, right? <laughs> and the men would go out and fight and the women would make sure, would, would protect the, the space at home and run, run everything. And so there's, I don't know, I just, it feels like there's a need for grounding for you with the, with the identity piece, right? It's like, there's this place where you're still buying into the, I'm too weak to do this. And it didn't show up in any specific block, but it showed up in reflection in like eight different places, right? It's, it's, that's the common theme underneath like eight different things that are going on, right? The need to be invisible and the, you know, the, just the, all of the pieces that we've been talking about, fantasy stuff and everything. So I really want you to step into your inner badass and the, the fact that you are a badass, right? Not just that you think you're, it might be a badass or that, you know, well, sometimes I can do that. No, 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 no. All the time you are a fucking badass. Okay. All the time. Even when you are in tears in a puddle on the floor, you are a fucking badass. Okay. Because you're usually not in tears in a puddle on the floor. You're usually wiping away tears and continuing to do whatever it is that you need to do. And you feel like you're a basket case, but everybody around you says, well, you're still working. You must be fine. Okay. I'm telling you, I know what it's like to be in that space and you are in a puddle on the floor. It's just, nobody sees it right? You're a badass, no matter what you're doing. So stop pretending you're not. Okay. All right. And then the other piece is learning to shift your, your perspective on how you receive things. You need to shift your perspective on a lot of things right now. There's a lot of things that you're taking personally, a lot of things that you're perceiving as, as negative when they're probably neutral to good eventually, right? There's, there's just a lot of different stuff going on there, right? <clears throat> and a fair amount of anxiety that, that goes along with that. So, you know, those, the perspective shift is huge and, and necessary, Okay. And then the, the draining of the well of rage is, is after you've done the, the perspective shift and you're willing to step into your badass, then the well of rage will be able to be cleared more easily. Because if you try and clear the well of rage when you're still pretending you're not a badass, you're going to, you're going to collapse out of the anger and into sadness and yeah. not actually clear it. Okay. Yeah. So or puddle. yeah. Sadness puddle. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So all of that, but overall, this looks pretty good. I mean, you've done, it's clear to me, you've done a bunch of work. Um, and it's clear to me, there's still more to do, but welcome to the, welcome to the club that is human life. Right. <laughs> I'm still doing work every day. So uh, you know, it's just, that's just the nature of the beast. So, but yeah, the, so any questions about any of that? Okay. Oh, that was fun. Right. Okay, good. So, <laughs> so here's the thing. I have an option for you. If you're looking to let go of the, hold on, let me just pull my energy back because I'm like, oh, right. I'm still swimming in her field. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. And you're going to want to close up that little hole that I'm, that you made for me. Okay. So the perspective shift we were talking about and the, the anxiety piece and all of that can easily be addressed by the welcome to the woo program. So I don't know if you've had a chance to look at that on the website or not, but it's definitely an option for you. Okay. It'll give you 
techniques for talking with your guides. It'll give you techniques for managing your energy field, doing shielding and warding your property and talking to, you know, doing basic divination and all the things you need to get in touch with and do things in a safe manner for yourself so that you're not like getting chewed on by randomness and random ghosts that are attached to shit in your house. Yeah. So yeah. all of that. Uh, so, and it also addresses fear and anxiety, worry, dread, self-doubt, inner and outer judgment, and builds a foundation of self-support and courage. Okay. So all of those things to help you claim your inner badass, right? And to, it gives you a lot of that perspective shift that we were talking about. So it's not all of it, but it's a lot of it. Then the second program will do the rest of it. Okay. But if it's something you're interested in, we can have a conversation about it. I'm not going to say, oh, you got to have that conversation right now because I, I want you to sit with what you've got. Right. And then the, the program itself is four months long. So, and it's designed to be done in 15 minutes a day. So, because my people are very, very busy. And so there is a online course, there's uh, twice monthly coaching calls in, in a group environment, but it's a small group. So max number of people you'll ever have in the group are 15. I think right now there's like six. So it's a very small, intimate group. And then there's discussion on messenger in between. Um, so all of that is included in the price and the program is $29.97 for the four months. Okay. So, or $750 a month per month, you know, for four months, if you want to do it that way. So if that is something you're interested in, you can let me know. I, I don't let people in. You can't just sign up on the website. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I need to talk to everybody before they come in. Cause I need to make sure everybody's safe for everybody else in the group. Right. You are never going to flame anybody else in the group. I'm not worried about you. The, everybody's got the well of rage, but you've got the, I can keep a lid on it and not take it out on the, on the people in the group. So I'm not worried about you, but I do, I do talk to everybody before they come in. So if you think you might be interested, let me know. And I will send you a link where you can actually sign up because the, the page on the website is just sign up for a discovery call. Um, right. And so you know, I already know that this would be a good fit for you. So you don't need a discovery call. So I can send you the link to just sign up if you think that might be, be something you'd want to do. Do you want, would you like me to send you the link? Are you thinking about it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I will do that. My suggestion, my strong suggestion to you is that you not make the decision today that you sleep on it. You get up tomorrow, see how you feel about it and make a commitment to make a decision one way or the other within the next two days after that, because what happens when we grow up in these sort of environments is that we end up with these sort of rips and tears and holes in our, our identity. And then we have to build up energy, build up energy, build up energy, and then pull the trigger immediately or else all the energy drains out, right? And so this conversation has built up the energy. So I don't want it to drain out instead of you making a conscious choice, right? So if you make a choice in the next two, three days, you'll be fine. If you wait longer than that, then the energy can drain out and then you may have the decision made for you in a path that you may not have wanted. So, okay. So, all right, I will send that to you. Uh, anything else I can do for you before we wrap up? Okay. No, I think so. All right. Thank you very much. Thank and you. I'll be in touch. <laughs> So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh, I'm so